Hi, and welcome to another weekly Monday Mortgage Moments. So if you tuned in last week, you know that this month we are focusing on self-employed individuals, so business for self, sole proprietors, corporates. Um, and today I want to talk about what you need to take into consideration when you're doing your income tax as a, as a self-employed person. So a lot of times when you're in business for yourself, you tend to take a lot of write-offs off your income. So you might have a gross income of say 100,000, um, but when you get down to the net amount because of the amount of write-offs that you've taken, maybe that income's coming in at 30 or 40,000. That can be challenging when you're applying for a mortgage because that amount of income won't necessarily qualify you for a lot um, when looking for financing for a home. So there are options when you're self-employed. We have different types of lenders that look at your income a little bit differently as opposed to just looking at your tax returns. So what you need to take into consideration is the cost benefit, right? When you are looking at these types of lenders, you will often have to pay a slightly higher interest rate and sometimes there are fees involved, right? But when you look at the bigger picture, how much money are you saving by claiming a lower income, even though you're paying a higher interest rate on your mortgage and maybe paying fees? So when you're initially getting your mortgage with what we would call a B lender, um, you can realistically expect a, an interest rate that's about 1% higher than you would through a traditional type lender, right? So that 1%, well, let's say on an average mortgage of 300,000, that 1% higher could amount to about an extra $3,000 a year that you're paying in interest. There will be fees the first time you place your mortgage with a B lender, but those fees won't necessarily recur if you just do a straight renewal um, at the end of your term. So let's say your fees are um, in the range of two and a half percent on a $300,000 mortgage. Um, then you are looking at about $4,500 in initial fees, throw that extra $3,000 in interest on there. So you are, are looking at potentially $7,500 a year more, but if you're taking yourself into a lower tax bracket, you could be potentially saving nine to $20,000 in income tax. So when you look at the cost benefit analysis, maybe it makes more sense for you to claim less income and pay slightly higher fees and interest on an alternative type mortgage. So these are rough estimates. Um, it's always good to sit down and, and talk over your situation, but Sometimes you just need to look beyond the higher interest rate or the fact that there's fees and, and really make a decision based on the overall benefit and cost to you. Uh, hope that's helped. Uh, my name is Brenda Saint-Amond. I am an independent mortgage agent with Mortgage Sense here in Barrie. Hope you're having a great Monday. I appreciate your time and thank you for tuning in and we'll talk soon. Have a great day.